Lesson 1.3 Controlling Graphics In Lesson 1.3 we are going to learn to assign colors to objects, learn how to change the line weights on objects, learn how to manage the attributes palette, learn how to apply hatches, gradients and line styles. Let's get into Vectorworks. In this lesson we're going to learn all about the attributes palette. This is the thing that controls the fills, the line weights, how we create and, and really how we make objects come to life. Hatches, gradients, that kind of thing. But before we do that we need to create some objects and I'm going to change my layer scale. So right click, change layer scale. We're going to make this one to one scale. So we can see that. And I'm going to create my rectangles again. So we made these last time. You might remember if I just change that, make it 50 by 50 there, and that's fine. Let's make another one. Click here, tab 50, tab minus 50. You might remember we did this in the previous lesson, and double click on my rectangle tool, and two inches again, or 50 by 50, and position next click. So there we are. So we've now got our three objects. If we select the first object, we can go to the attributes palette, and we can change from a fill to no fill at all. You see it goes hollow. Uh, we can change the color of the fill. So we've got all these colors that we can access. We can just use the ones that we've used in this active document. Maybe we don't like that color so much. Uh, we can use that one. Or we can choose a color from another palette. So let's just have a look at how we control information from other palettes. So those are my classic colors. And these are my standard Vectorworks colors. And you can see there's a range, like a rainbow pattern through here. We also have the ability to change the type of palette that's assigned. So we can choose any of these palettes that are here. What about if we choose just some of these uh, Benjamin Moore classic colors? Choose that and OK. So now when we come to choose colors, you'll see we've got Benjamin Moore classic colors here. And we can choose any of these classic colors that are in here really handy. If we want to know more about this color, we can also choose to look at this color. Let's just go down to the bottom here. Let's view the color palette as a list. Now when I look at my colors, you'll see I can see the names of the colors. So there they are there. These are the um, Benjamin Moore colors. And so you can choose them by their name. And we can also search. So if we knew a, a color range or a particular color that we wanted, I'm just going to look for cream. Let's look for cream. There's a peaches and cream there. Hit the enter key. Now I can just see creams. So it's quite handy being able to search for those. BM space 8. There it is there. Pink salmon. So it's quite handy to be able to choose those different color ranges. I'm going to just go back to my standard VectorX colors and choose a gray. Now, if I don't like seeing them in a list like this, I can go back down here and I can view my colors as a grid again. So that's quite handy. So that's how we change the color in the middle. Let's just have a look at how we can change this to a pattern. Here are my patterns here, and I've got a range of patterns. I find this top line are the ones that are most useful. We can choose the background color. We can change the foreground color. And you can actually mix up different colors by doing that. So I'm going to put this back to black and white. So it's just my standard. And it comes out, it actually prints as a very nice little gray. What about this one here? What do we want this to be? Let's try a hatch for this one. And we've got a little square hatch. We could choose brick. We can choose all sorts of different hatches that are available. We can choose tiles, images, gradients, and so on. Once we've placed some of these, I'm just going to create some other rectangles. Now you might remember I use my keyboard shortcut, so key four. I can create a slightly larger area like this. Let's put a tile in there. So we've got a tile there. And if I want to, I can change that to a gradient or an image. Gradient's quite fun. There is a tool here called the Attribute Mapping Tool. The Attribute Mapping Tool, when you select it, you'll notice that you get a start point for your gradient and an end point for your gradient. So you can actually choose where the gradient starts and stops. 
we can click on this button just here and we can choose whether it's a linear gradient or a radial gradient. So sometimes I do this so that the gradient goes from one corner to the other and you can see it gradually fades across that point there. If I bring that back to the middle, I get a color in the middle and it gradients out in a radial pattern. If we make that a image, we have the ability to scale the image. So I can make my image that big. And you'll notice if I go to the corner, I can scale it. If I go to a midpoint, I can rotate it. If I make that a tile, there's my tile there. Now there aren't that many options here with my object until I zoom out. So what I need to do is to zoom out a bit. You'll see there's my controlling box there. So I can grab my tile and I can make it smaller. I can also rotate my tile. And again, I can grab a corner, I can make it larger. So that's the attribute mapping tool, works with those objects. It doesn't work with a pattern because it's not a fill or a gradient type object. So I'm just going to do fit to page area so I can zoom in. So that's controlling the color in the objects. What I'd also like to look at is controlling the line weight on objects. We'll make that 0.35 and we'll make this 0.18. So I've got my standard line weights here and we'll have a look in a second at how we look at these or how we control or manage these line weights. Now when I zoom in, you might not see much of a difference between my line weights. There's a quick preference just up here called Zoom Line Thickness. And when you turn that on, you'll actually see the line weights a lot easier. That Zoom Line Thickness is one of my quick options, and it's the one down the bottom, Zoom Line Thickness. So that can be really handy. It's a good idea to get used to managing these line weights so that you actually control them, and so that you set them the way you want. Let's just change the color of an object. So there we are. Now you might notice that by making the changes to my attributes palette here, it did not change any of the objects on the screen because nothing is selected. Just here you might notice it says no selection. So what happens when I make these changes? Well, when I make these changes here when nothing is selected, this becomes the default values. So if I create another rectangle, it will have those values. I've had one client said to me that whenever they click on an object, the attributes palette changes higgledy piggledy. Well, that's not true. It's actually changing to reflect the choices you've made for each object. So it's now displaying the choices of that object. So if I want that to be a solid white fill with a thin line, I can do that, but it's only changed that one object. The default values are still back like this. How do we change them? We change them when nothing is selected. And now the next object you create will be like that. Now the other thing you can do is to set the default attributes. When you set the default attributes, the choices I've made here become the defaults. And if I select an object, I can actually apply the default attributes. So if I choose use default attributes, it should change that object back for me. So let's just go down to here. That's my default attributes. It didn't change my line weight, I still have to change that. I'm just going to zoom out because I'd like to show you something else. So let's draw another rectangle. There's one there and there's one there. So I've shown you how you can apply gradients and hatches using the attributes palette. But you can also apply gradients and hatches using your resource manager. Let's have a look at an example. So I've gone to my resource manager. Here's my Vectorworks libraries. So I'm going to scroll down until I find something like hatches. There's my gradients. Let's have a look in gradients. These are my default gradients. If I grab hold of that gradient, hold my mouse button down, drag it across to an object and let go, Vectorworks will apply that gradient to that object. Let's have a look at hatches. I've got some hatches here. These are my default hatches. Let's grab one of those and we'll drop that on an object and we'll say don't show that anymore. So you can see it's quite easy to drag and drop hatches onto objects. 
you can drag and drop different stack bonded brickwork, brick hatches. We can also put gradients on there, or we can put image fills. Do we want a ceiling fill? And there it is. So it's really quite easy to assign gradients, hatches, line styles to different objects. We haven't covered line styles, so we really should cover that. I'm just going to zoom into this area here. And we want our resource manager to go away. So let's have a look at line styles. So we've looked at line weight. So there's a line. And we've looked at line weight. So we know we can make this change here. But we can also choose a line type. So that's a line type. Let's have a look here. Click on that so I can choose one of these ones. So we can have different options here. There's dash styles, there's bats. You just double click and it'll change that line type for you. Let's change the line weight. And you'll notice that it actually changes the dash pattern. The dash pattern is related to the weight. Less dashes, thinner, more dashes. So that's how we can ass assign line types or line styles. When we want to change the line thicknesses, we've got these options here. These are already set in Vectorworks for us. If you want to know where to fix those, we go to Tools on the menu bar, Options, and we choose Line Thicknesses. And this allows us to choose our line thicknesses. 0 0.05 is probably the thinnest you ever want to go. Um, I actually don't change them. I think that they're fine for me. But if these are not fine for you, this is where you change them. I'll change this one at the bottom just to show you how it works. So I'll make it 2.5 millimeters thick. When I go to this list here, you can see mine now says 2.5 millimeters. It's very, very fat, and it's not something I do a lot of. So to fix it, tools, options, line thicknesses, and we want that to be 2 millimeters. This is the end of lesson 1.3. In this lesson, we learned how to assign colors to objects. We learned to change line weights on objects, learned to manage the attributes palette, 